This video was sponsored by Woodpecker's Tools, because they're flippin' awesome. Hey, you wanna, you wanna learn how to build a table? Well, you should watch the video. You're already watching the video. You should keep watching the video. For this project, you will need approximately 45 board feet of 5 quarter white oak. Now any good piece of furniture starts with first selecting your lumber. Sure, you could go down to the lumber store and grab some wood willy-nilly off the lumber rack, but your end result's not going to be that great. You want to hand pick each piece that's going to go into your final product, making sure to eliminate any pieces that are bowed, corkscrewed, or have any undesirable features. When it comes to building any table, one of the most time consuming parts is going to be your tabletop itself. This is for multiple reasons. Number one, you have to glue the whole thing together and then let it sit, and then there's a lot of finishing work that goes into that top to make it look good. So I like to start building my table from the top down. So obviously the first thing we have to do is get the wood to a point that we can glue it all together in a slab that will make up our top. So once we cut each piece down on our chop saw roughly to length, we run them all through our grizzly joiner to get a straight edge. After we've joined each board, we take them over to our table saw and we cut them down to get our desired width. With our length and width figured out, it's time to finalize our thickness. So we take all of our pieces and we run them through our planer to try and get a uniformity across the board. Now, the thickness here doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent. Consistent thickness means consistent glue up. And a consistent glue up means less cussing and self-degradation. As you orient your boards for glue up, you want to pay close attention to the growth patterns of each board. Each growth pattern should be alternated back and forth across the top of your slab. This will help prevent any warping or cupping across your surface when you do your final glue up. Because we're doing a round top for this pedestal table, we have to get all of our boards lined up and in order and figure out exactly where our circle will land before we do any of our joinery. We'll be using Festool dominoes to join this piece, and the last thing we want to do is cut one of them in half. When drawing your circle, simple is better. You don't have to have an exactly perfect circle at this point, just a rough idea of where that circle will land so that you can place your dominoes before glue up. So we simply grabbed our 36 inch woodpecker rule, placed it on our center pivot, and held a pencil at our 24 inch mark. This will give us a 48 inch circle to use as a reference as we lay out our dominoes and prevent us from running into any of those dominoes when we cut out our final circle. With all of our pieces drilled out and ready for dominoes, it's time to watch me do something very, very stupid. And that is attempt to glue up this 48 by 48 oak slab entirely by myself. Here's a friendly word of advice. Before you start gluing up your slab, go ask a friend, husband, wife, family member, street youth, to come and help you glue this thing up. Not only will it be much less stressful, it will be much easier, and you won't look like a doofus like myself. Look, I'm, I'm up on a step stool. I'm literally using a step stool to try and glue this up. Shameful. I am embarrassed with myself. But whether it's skill or more likely just dumb luck, I managed to get this slab together, clamped, and glued. Now it's time to start on our base. Starting our base looks very much like starting the top of our table in that we have to first start by cutting all of our base pieces to length. Now we'll be starting with the center support of our pedestal base. We have to glue up a solid block of white oak of which we can build off the rest of our pedestal. Glue them all together, you say? Why don't you just get one big piece of wood for your center support? Now, this does seem like an easy, logical thing to do. 
but this all comes down to lumber availability. If you can find a consistent source of 16 quarter white oak solid pieces, please let me know in the comments. I would love to get on that train. But the nice thing about woodworking, if they don't have it, you can make it. Now I'm gonna try and show this build in the way that I actually do it, which means I jump back and forth from my base to my top, depending on what's ready to work. I just glued up my base pedestal, but my top is ready to go. So I'm gonna jump over to my top and start working on cutting out my circle. Now at this point, we have a five quarter thick white oak top. But as you might've noticed in the first shot of the table at the beginning of the video, it looked more like 10 quarter. Now, we didn't wanna spend the money on 10 quarter white oak to do this entire top, but we wanted that thickness. So, before you cut out your circle, you need to build up that perimeter thickness with another layer of 5 quarter white oak. Now, when doing this, it is important to account for seasonal wood movement. You want each individual piece to be floating independent from each other. You'll also find it much easier to glue each individual piece on the bottom if you first trim off any excess wood that's just getting in your way. Once our slab is trimmed down, you can start gluing on those pieces. Now, like I said, you want them to be independently floating from one another. So you're just gluing each piece to the table top, but not to one another. To cut our circle, we'll be using the router circle jig from Rockler. I have used this jig a number of times, and I can attest that it does in fact cut a circle. So, with our router jig installed and our router securely fastened, it's time to spin some circles up in this heezy fo sheezy. And just like that, your ugly mismatch of glued together pieces has become a perfect circle which just goes to show that sometimes you have to cut corners in order to do things right. With our circle cut out, it's time to start making it all nice looking. So I like to go over the entire top of the hand plane to get rid of any ridges, glue lines, or ugly imperfections. I follow that up with the palm sander, both on the top and around my perimeter, to get rid of any marks left behind by my router bit. Then finally, I like to go over the entire thing by hand to get rid of any swirl marks left behind by my orbital sander. And with that, my top is done and ready to finish. I'll set it aside and get back to work on my base. Once our glue has had sufficient time to dry, we can remove our clamps and begin to square up our center pedestal. The easiest and most effective way to do this is by simply running it through your joiner. If you don't have a joiner, well, you can kind of use your table saw, but I'm not going to show you how. It gets a little sketchy, and I don't want to be responsible for you losing a finger. Now, when you're milling up your center post, you want to make sure that each side is exactly equal to the other. This will come in very handy when it comes to cutting our support pieces. But with our center support done, you can set that aside and we will start constructing our top and bottom cross braces. Each one of these cross braces will be hooked together with a classic half lap joint. So in order to cut these out, we first have to find the center of each one of our pieces. Using an off cut from one of my other cross pieces, I mark out exactly where I need to remove material in order to make my half lap joint. Now there are a couple of ways that I could remove the material for this joint. One of the easiest would be to use a dado stack on a table saw. But when I only have to cut a few pieces, I like to use the trenching feature on my Capex miter saw. I find that it goes fairly quickly, and I can make minor adjustments when it comes to fitting my pieces together. With your half laps cut, it's time to fit your board. Your ultimate goal is a nice, snug fit. 
I employ the same goal when I'm shopping for pants, underwear, and socks. Once you're happy with your fit, you can glue your joints together and clamp them down. Once your joints are good and dry, it's time to attach your center pedestal to your cross pieces. You start by marking out the center of your cross piece and tracing where your center pedestal will fall on that piece. For this particular base, we'll be attaching our center pedestal with screws. So we'll drill out some corresponding holes on each cross piece so that those screws can be countersunk up into our pedestal and not interfere with the bottom or top of the table. If there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I'll find any and every excuse to make a jig. In this case, I wanted to make a simple jig in order to perfectly determine the center of my cross piece and place my center pedestal. For this, I'm simply using some scrap plywood and some instant bond adhesive from Tight Bond. I find that the corresponding glue and accelerator works wonders when you need to throw a quick jig together. You simply apply the glue to one surface, the accelerator to the other, press down, and voila, you instantly have two pieces of wood that are hooked together and ready to use. Next, I take those pieces of scrap plywood that I just glued together, making sure they're snug both towards the middle and to the left and right of my piece. Then I clamp them down so they can't move around on me. Next, I take my center pedestal, and again, I find exactly where it should be located on the corresponding traced out marks I put down previously. Once I'm happy with its location, I lock it in place with another piece of scrap. This time I fasten it down with a 16 gauge brad nail. And I repeat the same process on the other side. Finally, I apply two more pieces of scrap ply, holding the center pedestal in from the final direction. What this leaves me with is a very functional and very simple jig that allows me to perfectly find the center of each one of my cross pieces. With my jig made, it's now time to attach all of my pieces together. You can, of course, do this without the jig simply by holding your cross piece in place and screwing it together. However, the jig makes it so simple and easy that I highly recommend taking the time to make one. And because we simply used plywood scrap, once you're all done, you can just break the jig apart and you're good to go. Next it's time to make our brace pieces, attach them to the pedestal, and start making this look like a true trestle style table. I start by first cutting a piece of scrap wood that I can use as a guide to determine the length of each one of my side supports. Once I have my guide cut and sized exactly how I like it, I then use it to trace out my corresponding brace pieces and cut them accordingly. For this particular project, we will be attaching our brace pieces using screws. In order to hide our screws, we will be countersinking a hole at the end of each brace piece and covering up our screw with a plug. In order to make sure we drill every hole exactly the same, I created another jig that will allow us to mark each and every board. Now, if you have to do something repetitive, like mark boards over and over again, I like to make it a little bit more enjoyable. In this case, I decided to make my jig look like Adolf Hitler. That way, as I mark each board, I could also imagine I'm poking him in the eyes over and over and over again. But I digress. With all of our boards marked, it's now time to drill them out to accept our screws and eventually our concealing plugs. With all of your pieces now cut, drilled, and ready for assembly, you will next want to clean off each piece with a tack cloth to remove any dust or debris that may interfere with your finishing process. And then you'll want to go ahead and pre-finish all of your pieces before attaching them together. To finish this particular table, we'll be using Rubio Monocoat two-part 
hardener and oil in cotton white. We love using Rubia Monocoat on white oak, especially the cotton white color as it leaves the white oak looking very natural and untouched. Not to mention it is an absolute breeze to apply. Because we are pre-finishing these pieces before we finish the entire piece, you only need to finish the sections of the wood that you will not be able to get to once the piece is assembled. In this case, we are only finishing the bottom portion of each one of our brace pieces. Once we have all of our brace pieces finished, we will then move on to our pedestal base and do the same thing there. I always try and do things in an order that will be most productive, so while you have your finish already made up and your gloves on, you might as well finish your tabletop as well. And with our pre-finishing behind us, it is finally time to transform the lowly caterpillar, which is our pedestal base, into a beautiful and magnificent butterfly, which will be our trestle base. It's important to note that when attaching your brace pieces, you want to attach them using screws, pre-drilled, but no glue. We simply do this to allow for seasonal movement as the wood will want to move throughout the year. And well, if you made it through the bottom half, you should be able to make it through the top. So with all of our brace pieces attached, it's now time to cover up our screws using some pre-drilled plugs. Now, when drilling your plugs, you want to make sure that you select a piece of wood as similar to your brace pieces as possible, as this will give you the best concealment when you insert your plugs. Once you have successfully plugged up every hole, you can go back with a flush cut saw and cut them smooth to each brace. This is another reason why we only pre-finished the bottom of each piece, as you now must go back and sand down any marks you made by your saw as well as each plug. And finally, to level out our base, we attach four simple wooden feet to the bottom of the structure and we call it good. And with that, we are ready to apply the rest of our finish to our base. As you can see, this final coat of finish is made exponentially easier due to the fact that we pre-finished all of our brace pieces and our pedestal base. Just don't forget to finish those feet. Last but not least, you need to drill four holes on the underside of the pedestal base. These holes will allow for you to attach the base to the top using four screws. At this point, you should be able to step back and see something that somewhat resembles a round trestle table. If you are currently staring at a different piece of furniture or a lowly pile of wood, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but apparently you are no good at woodworking and you might want to choose a different career and or hobby or go back and watch this video again. Lord knows we could use the views.